My name is Bob Wagner. NJSO at Home has been creating streaming content, and we hope you've enjoyed seeing and hearing some of our musicians in those great videos. We realize, though, that we have been featuring music mostly written by dead white guys. We've embarked on a mission to change that. I began the search for pieces by composers who are neither dead nor white and was happy to discover a piece that was written for a colleague of mine, Lacolian Washington, called Lacolian Loops, a trio for clarinet, bassoon, and piano, the second movement of which is a duo for clarinet and bassoon. It's my pleasure to join with clarinetist Pascal Archer to bring you that movement today. And because he's not dead, we can actually chat with the composer, my friend and colleague, Daniel Bernard Romain. Hi, Daniel, or do you prefer DBR? Oh, Daniel's fine. Daniel's fine. Great. So let me ask you to say a few words about Lacolian Loops. Uh, well, Lacolian Washington and I uh, knew each other for a few years before he asked me to write the piece. My recollection was that um, he was married and is married to a woman from Sweden, and they have a son. And she would sing to their child uh, the Swedish folk songs. And Lacolian sent me, I can't remember if it was actually recordings or transcriptions of these Swedish folk songs, but nonetheless, I took them and was able to um, incorporate them into the work in each movement. So in some ways, uh, Lacolian loops are in fact theme and variations on Swedish folk songs. So I was glad to discover this piece. I did wonder what the Swedish connection was. You gave us the Swedish song titles. I, I had to Google them, however, but they are beautiful and apparently very yes. popular. Yeah, they're really beautiful. They're really yes. moving. And yeah, each yeah. each movement I subtitled. So if somebody was interested, they could go back and, and find out. Does, does the, they have had the titles of the songs so they could research them and listen to them on right. their own. Daniel, this is not the first time we've collaborated. The New Jersey Symphony performed a full orchestra piece of yours, and it was a while ago, but could you tell us a little bit about that piece? It was a while ago. I believe it was underwritten by the Spinks organization. It was a commission, underwritten by the Spinks organization, and I decided to um, write a piece called Dancers, Dreamers, and Presidents. It's a three-movement symphony, Dancers, Dreamers, Presidents. Um, the motivation was then Senator Barack Obama was invited to appear on Ellen DeGeneres' talk show. And the premise of the show is that when the guest comes out, they kind of dance with her, at least they used to. And they kind of make their way to the couch for the interview. And it's about 21 seconds long. And there is Senator Barack Obama and the talk show host, uh, Ellen De De DeGeneres, dancing together. And he's a pretty good mover. <laughs> and so is she. Um, past the humor, it dawned on me that this was international television. This was a young black man, a young white woman dancing together. And then and now, uh, it was something that had a certain um, urgency and poignancy. And the fact of the matter is, it was something that wasn't always going to be shown on television, depending on you know the year in our country. And given that she is openly uh, gay and he is biracial, I thought that they um, embodied so much change and evolution and equity, if you will, in our country, then and now. So besides the humor um, and past the, the novelty, if you will, of daytime television, I thought the moment was actually really important. He, of course, went on to become uh, president, and she has had all of her success in the entertainment world and in the philanthropic world, for that matter. And um, those 21 seconds became a 21-minute symphony, where I'm really looking at the, the, the sound, if you will, of what does it mean to be black and white, male, female, gay, lesbian, biracial, uh, dancing with one another, moving together, um, it's trying to find commonality. I remember the piece well. Uh, it was so inspiring on so many levels. More recently, we've been working together at the League of American Orchestras, where we both serve on the board of directors. I've been so impressed with you, not only as a composer, but as an activist voice for composers and people of color in the music business. You've inspired me with your empathy, humanity, and it so helps us do our work together at the League. Oh, could you tell that story? Um, the one about your son. Uh, I, I actually heard you tell it twice, so I know it's true. <laughs> That's right. 
I hope you'll share it because I found it so telling and so true. I've retold it in conversations many times. Oh, which was the story? The one about your son, Black Lives Matter, and TikTok. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, he has a couple stories now, but the one I think you're remembering, we were having a conversation around, well, TikTok of all things, and he decided I needed a TikTok account. And I chose my picture, and by doing that, I looked at his, and he had the uh, Black Lives Matter, Black Power fist up. And I said to him, well, what is that? Do you know what that is? He said, yeah, that's, that's Black Lives Matter. And uh, I said, well, what does it mean? And he said, well, Dad, you know, um, um, all lives matter, but sometimes black lives don't. <laughs> and I was so moved by that because it was a way to describe what is such a polarizing variation on black lives matter with all lives matter. And this notion of how do we really start to speak about the speak about the plight of BIPOC people when you're competing with this notion of quite simply white supremacy and white patriarchal supremacy. Well, thank you, Daniel, for sharing that and letting us present your music. Maybe not quite as you first conceived it for the Colian, performed in a concert hall but perhaps from a more up-to-date perspective. Again, thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thank you. Real pleasure. Thank you.